Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I'm a microblading artist in New York City. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of running your microblading business. If you're watching this video, you're probably feeling burnt out. Maybe you've been doing this for a few months now and not getting any traction or clients. But before you quit, please watch this video until the end and see how these tips are going to help you. I've actually been running this business as a one woman show for about two years now and I've been able to maintain a steady growing clientele and also turn this into a full time career. All thanks to some best practices but also some things that I learned early on not to do that really helped set my business up for success. Let's just jump right into it. Mistake number one that you should not be doing is bottlenecking your appointments. What that means is Think about a wine bottle for a second. The area in which the wine is contained, let's pretend that is your money, your clients, your growth, your business. And the bottleneck part is you. As you can see, when there is a bottleneck, the flow is actually impeded. What that means is if you're still taking phone calls to book appointments, or if you're still manually setting up appointments for clients, that is a huge no-no. That means that unless you're there, on call 24 seven to book an appointment, you won't be able to take a client or book an appointment for them if you're off or if you're on vacation or if you're busy doing something else, running errands, that means that a client won't be able to book an appointment with you. So instead of doing that, you guys should be automating your appointment system. I personally use a software called Acuity, also known as Squarespace Scheduling now. And I'm not sponsored to mention any of these companies, but this is just something that I did that really helped set my business up for success. When you automate your appointment system, you actually do three things. The first thing that happened when I automated my appointment system is that I actually get to go into my Acuity and create my schedule for the month meaning I get to open the books essentially. Obviously this is gonna take a little bit of work on your part to set it up because you're gonna have to know your work hours and your work days, but that's honestly the fun part of being an entrepreneur. You have the freedom to really spend time with your family and also do the things that you really love all working around your schedule. The second thing that this does for you is that it actually vets your clients for you. Meaning if you know that a client has an old cover up and you wanna make sure that they're eligible, well, in Acuity, there's actually a section where I type out all of the requirements for being eligible for booking. And so one of them is a cover up question. If this person has had an old tattoo done before, I tell them, Stop, don't book any further, but instead text Anna at this number a picture of your old tattoo. And what this does is that it skips all of that work where I'm calling them like, hey, do you have a picture? Can you send it to me? Oh, which day? Friday? No, that's not going to work. Let's do Saturday instead, right? It cuts out that entirely. And instead, it automatically sends your client to your booking page so that they can pick a date, but also they can find out if they're eligible to book even. And the third thing that an automatic calendar system does for you is that it actually takes your deposit down. So at the end of the sign up form, my clients are actually able to put down a deposit through the payment processor directly from my Acuity page. So as you can see, it literally knocks off three birds with one stone and I love automating my appointment systems. It's definitely freed up so much of my time and taken off the headache of being burnt out from just trying to take in clients and booking their appointments. Mistake number two that some of us are doing, especially in the beginning, is forgetting to take pictures. This is a huge no-no. I'm gonna say no-no a lot in this video, but as you can see, these are all big no-nos. When you forget to take a picture, you're literally forgetting to document your work. And I know in the beginning as artists, we are taking forever. I know that some of us try to help the process and get them out the door quicker. So we want to appease to the client and we'll just skip taking pictures, but that does nobody any good. You have to document your work because your entire career, your portfolio is going to be your money. It is what documents and gives the evidence that you actually have done work before and that you actually have experience. And not only that, client gets to see what type of work you do, what kind of style you are as an artist, and they'll know whether or not they wanna choose you over a competitor. It's so important, you guys. I know for myself and also a lot of microblading artists, our Instagram is our number one vehicle for driving in customers. And if you don't have before and after pictures, then what are you even making an Instagram for? A best practice is to actually slow it down and really treat your portfolio like it is money. 
Meaning, at the beginning of your appointment, make sure you're taking from all angles your client's bare eyebrows and even videos you can take and then do the same for after the appointment once you're done with your work. Doesn't matter what you did that day, just document all of it. I know in the beginning, sometimes I wasn't very completely happy with the work that I did, but it doesn't matter. Document it anyway, because it also becomes a learning process where you get to look at your old photos and document your progress and how you are improving. You can always look back at old photos and be like, okay, here's what I went wrong, and this is the skin type that I did X procedure on, maybe I should have done Y. And it's a way for you to learn and become a better artist. Mistake number three is public shaming your clients. I know that for some of us, we can get frustrated when our clients mess up, whether that's drinking coffee before a procedure or showing up late or not even showing up at all. I want you to think about a big corporation. If a customer came into a big corporation and made a mistake, then that corporation is not going to go on Twitter and blast their customers. Instead, what they usually do is they set up policies. They come up with policies and then they make sure that their customers follow it. For example, if a client wants to come in and return an item that they purchased, then that corporation will have a return policy in place that deems whether this item is refundable or not. So very similarly for us as microblading artists, instead of going on social media and blasting our customers and making them feel ashamed, it's better to set up policies. For example, I noticed at one point that a lot of my customers were starting to show up late. And I realized instead of going on social media to like put these people on blast and blame them, I have to understand that things happen and people are gonna be late and that's it's just a part of life. However, my time is still money and my time is still important. So I went into my automated emails that are being sent to people who confirm their appointments. And in these emails, I strictly write down exactly why they need to be on time. And I always tell them after 15 minutes, I am canceling this appointment. And that is because I'll probably have a client lined up after you. And if you are late past 15 minutes, then I won't be able to work on the client after you. So I really try to enforce it to people and I come up with strict policies. Instead of public shaming, make sure you come up with the policies and the rules and the boundaries that you want your customers to follow. And be respectful and be professional. Mistake number four is taking everybody as a client. I know you guys are wondering, okay, Anna, isn't the more the merrier? Like, don't I want more clients? And yes, we all want a higher influx of clients, but it matters the type of clients that come through your doors as well. You won't believe the number of posts and stories I've heard and read about people who've had really bad experiences with their customers. Usually there's gonna be telltale signs and red flags. However, these artists will still take these clients because they want to make more money or they, they can't give up this client, they want to have, take everybody but they realized at the end that that was a mistake. It's really important to take note of red flags. If a person, for example, is coming to you and they're asking you for a Groupon, or they're asking you for a discount off your sessions, or if they're not listening to your before care instructions, or if they're not paying attention to the after care instructions, a lot of these red flags will be made known to you before your appointment. And it is totally okay for you to say, hey, look, I don't think that we're gonna be a right fit at this time. So I would recommend you to do a little bit more research and maybe find an artist who is more suitable for you. But unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to take you. You are in 100% the right to deny clients that you find are not a right fit for you. Because at the end of the day, your clients are gonna represent your business and you want quality clients, especially when you are giving quality treatment to your clients. My best practice for this is to find your tribe. Really find who your ideal audience is and cater to them. For example, I personally over the two years have noticed that a lot of my clients are caretakers. However, they don't really have the time to serve and nurture themselves. So what I noticed of my clients is that they're low maintenance and they're busy. They want to get up and go, but they also don't wear a lot of makeup and that means that they need a natural look. And that is why my clients come to me is because I love doing natural eyebrows. Now, there are plenty of artists and people out there who prefer a more bolder, made-up look, and that's fine. That's totally by preference. There is more than enough 
abundance of clients, no matter the competition that you're seeing now, there's always going to be opportunities. So it's really important for you to narrow down exactly what your ideal client is and then cater more towards them. So I love pushing my natural before and afters, all of the techniques that I'm learning to create a more natural brow. I'm always sharing that with my clients because I know who they are and now I'm completely zeroing in and catering to them. So find your tribe and cater to them. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and quiz you really quickly on the information that we learned today. My question for you is, why is it important to set up an automated appointment system? Is it A, because it's good to spend money on software for your business? B, it vets your clients for you? C, there's no need for back and forth from your end, your client can just book the appointment automatically? Or D, both B and C. Go ahead and pause the video right here and go ahead and pick your answer. All right, you guys, if you picked D, that is the correct answer. Good job, you've been paying attention. Really try to put these best practices into place and remember that being a solopreneur is gonna be hard. Like a lot of us who started out this way have been through a lot of those scary first obstacles. I know it's really scary, but it's time to think less about yourself, but think more critically about what are the solutions you can start implementing into your business so that it can succeed. That's it for today's video, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. In next week's video, I'm going to be doing a really fun video about how to set up for your very first microblading client. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you haven't already, go ahead and join the Subby family. I come out with weekly videos for tips on building your own beauty business and microblading career. Thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you have an amazing, abundant day. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.